And then after the game, the reaction to George and what he'd, he'd done in that game, what was that like? Well, that was quite overwhelming because it, it, it shouldn't have happened. It went all against all the natural laws of football. Um, here was a team uh, that had a narrow lead so why wouldn't they play it um, cautiously, not take any great risks? In fact, the theme of, of Matt Busby's team tactical talk before the game was don't do anything rash, boys. Feel your way into the game and just uh, make sure that you don't go um, a, a goal down. Play it cautiously. Play it defensively. Feel your way. Get, get the touch of the ball, etc., they were his tactics, but as he, as he admitted later, he said, I might as well have been talking to myself. Because George took not a blind bit of notice of him. And he just played his own game. And Sir Matt, I remember him saying that um, I should have told him off for not following instructions, but how could I? He'd, 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 he'd made the, 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 the night his own. And you, of course, were there as a journalist to cover the game. What was? The, how did you react in your in your match report? And and how did you? Uh, were you surprised by the worldwide reaction and the way he was dubbed to El Beadle? Um, no, I wasn't surprised because I'd seen why it was being dubbed El Beadle. Football. <laughs> you've got to understand the background. Football was on the change. It was on the move. Uh, it was an era of new fashion new music, new clothes, new morals, new club life. Um, things were changing. It was, the, it was the start of the swinging 60s and football was part of the swinging 60s and George um, epitomised that uh, cavalier approach. So that's how I wrote it. Uh, it, it, it was significant. And I like to think that I grasp the significance of it, and I try to uh, portray that in my in my reports. And I certainly remember um, holding forth about George being the um, El, El Beatle. He was the football's answer to the Beatles, football's answer to the swinging sixties, and uh, so I let I let rip, a bit like George, except my letting rip was with words. In many ways, George was the first superstar footballer. Of his, and it, very much a, a new kind of icon in the game, wasn't he? Yes. Uh, I mean, there'd been star players before that. I mean, I grew up admiring Stanley Matthews and uh, Tom Finney, um, Nat Lofthouse, those sort of people. But there, there was a different um, look about George. He, he wasn't a... Uh, a sort of mazy dribbler. Uh, well, I say that he was. He was everything, um, but he, he, he was certainly a new type of footballer. Because I mean, when you looked at him, uh, there was nothing, nothing to him. He he was so slightly built. In fact, his landlady, Mrs. Fullaway in Chalton, when he first went round there, said he looked more like a little jockey than, than a, a, a young footballer. And uh, she she thought, he, how how will he how will he get on in football? It's a rough game, and he he looked puny and petrified. She needn't have worried. He coped. But from a media point of view, it must have been a dream, a, a fantastically uh, talented football player, but also a pin-up and a very attractive guy. Well, yes, he had a nice, easygoing uh, personality and character. Um, an eye for the girls, of course. Um, I just wished, looking back, that I'd been ten years younger so that I could have perhaps kept him company on some of his nightlife trips. But uh, I, I, I was a sort of uh, settled, married man with a family by then, so um, George was on his own as far as I was concerned when it came to nightlife. I couldn't keep pace with... Uh, what he was setting, but from the newspaper point of view, um, I used to get some of the girls ringing up saying, "Can George has dumped me? Can you, can you ask him why and send him back to me?" And uh, I felt like an agony aunt at times. 
I'm guessing it was obvious really from the early days that he was going to be a little bit of a heartbreaker with, with so many girls chasing yeah, him. Yeah, well, he was a heartbreaker. Um, when we were in uh, Denmark, um, pre-season pre one year, um, that was the year that he got friendly with Eva Harrelstead. She came over to Manchester, I think at George's invitation. Whether whether he really expected her to come, I don't know, but she was intent on uh, on marrying him. I think he she, she backed him into a corner and they got uh, engaged and it ended with a breach of promise uh, and a lawsuit. But that, that was George. He broke a lot of hearts. Even though Booz was threatening to kill him, he still found it uh, impossible to give up. And he certainly wasn't going to give up on, uh, on girls. I gave him a lift once um, from Wimslow Station. where we, the, we played in London and George had this house in Bramhall. And uh, my wife was meeting me and, and he was so shy. I had a teenage daughter who was in the car and she couldn't get two words out of him. But I watched him cross the road and ring the bell of, of his house and the reigning Miss Great Britain answered the door. So he, he wasn't totally uh, uh, to tongue-tied. He, he could talk when he had to. And uh, he, c he certainly could pull the girls. And going back to the game, just to sum up, I guess <clears throat> after that match it was... Did you have that feeling that, yes, the star is born on the world stage? I did, yeah. Um, and particularly when I read the papers the next day, they were hailing him as El Beetle. And he, he was a cunning so-and-so because um, he'd been shopping the, 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 the day before, uh, the morning of the flying home, and he'd seen this great big sombrero in a shop window. And he thought that would make a good prop for his um, clothes boutique. And so he bought it, carries it on the plane, and then with, in an inspired moment, how much was natural instinct, how much was pre-planned, I don't know. But he, but he put it on the back of his head uh, as we walked through the airport. Well, what a dream photograph for all the newspapers and the TV cameras who were there in force. I think the Daily Mirror printed this picture of him. where, And, and of course, it, it suited him, the sombrero on the back of his head and that lovely dark curly hair uh, shown off by the sombrero. And he just strolled through. And the Daily Mirror had that picture on both the front page and the back page. I couldn't get enough of him. A born self-publicist. Well, he was, and he didn't really have to try very hard. Uh, it, it all came so easily to him. And then, of course, he, it, it, the bandwagon never stopped after that. He, he opened a nightclub, he expanded his clothes business and uh, stepped up his, his, his swinging nightlife. So there was no holding him. Excellent. That's very good. Thanks, David.